Hi, my name is Eric Stinson. I'm with Juniper's product marketing team. Today I'm with Pramod Srinivasan, uh, who is Juniper's lead architect on Junos Evolved. Uh, we had done a vlog and actually started a series of vlogs a couple of months ago on Junos Evolved, um, and we've already done one with the introduction. And now, uh, today, what we're going to do is dig a little bit further into the architecture and specifically um, on modularity and high availability. Um, and Promote, being the expert on that, is uh, is going to talk to us. So welcome, Promote. Hi, Eric. Thanks for having me today. So um, Promote, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about how we accomplish the modularity and high availability and the value that that our, that our specific implementation of that provides? HA is the ability for uh, the device or the system or the operating system to be able to recover from failures and pro and restore service as quickly as possible. To be able to do that, there are certain important uh, architectural decisions that we took early on when we started Genos Evolved. The first important uh, decision was uh, the use of Linux as a base operating system and not making any changes, either state or code-wise in the base operating system. This provides for a very stable operating system, which supports the goal of resiliency to be able to support, uh, you know, there's no single point of failure that could bring the system down. Uh, the next important decision was to not build a monolithic operating system, but build an operating system where, which has, which is made up of large number of components, which are which can fail independently and recover without affecting other components in the system. So there are three important factors that make it possible for the Genos Evolved operating system to support HA for the applications and uh, improve the availability of the system. The first is a state-based interface, a single state-based interface. Genos Evolved, in Genos Evolved, applications communicate with each other through DDS, which is a state-based publish subscribe system. There's only one interface that the applications have to the rest of the system. What this means is that uh, first thing, there's not a mesh of application, mesh, mesh of IPCs going between applications. The second important thing is it is state-based, which means that you now applications could fail and you know there may be messages in transit, we may miss those messages, but on restart, it's able to go back and get to the last state that is what is what is required or what is fundamental for the system. Now, with this, the applications can fail and recover quickly without us having to worry about how do we make sure that the correctness of the system is guaranteed. The next important thing is when applications fail, the blast radius is limited to the component or the application, which means that uh, because it's a public subscribe system, producers and the consumers are uh, decoupled from each other, a failure of the consumer or the producer does not affect the rest of the system. So that's a first important concept, you know, the ability, a single interface to the system and having a state-based system. The second important concept or the important principle that we uh, built a chair on is synchronization of data. This data synchronization is supported by DDS. We can have multiple nodes in a cluster. In a, you know, it's a Genosi wall is a distributed operating system. And uh, with that, uh, the state is synchronized across multiple nodes in the operating system, which means that applications are location agnostic. They can be run, run anywhere on the in, in the cluster. So the ability to support multiple nodes in the cluster and ability to synchronize state across multiple nodes in the cluster is a second important factor that makes it possible to support HA. The third important factor is application orchestration. 
uh, Genasi world, as we discussed, is a distributed operating system, which means that it can factor in new nodes coming to the cluster or nodes getting uh, or failing the nodes, you know, leaving the cluster because of failure or a reboot or whatever. And the application orchestration layer is rule based. The applications and the nodes have requirements, and this application orchestrator, or this, what we call a sysman, is able to meet the requirements, consume the requirements of all these applications, and strive to meet the meet the requirements in this ever changing uh, cluster membership. So that is the three. These are the three primary factors which makes it possible for us to support. Uh, uh, HA in uh, Genasi world. One states uh, the single state based interface to the state synchronization between different nodes and three application orchestration. The next question, which was modularity, uh, is also was one of the important goals of Genasi world. Genos evolved is, is, is not built using one monolithic software. It is a collection of components that are independently upgradable and uh, which care the versions of each of these components from the build to packaging to install is, is, is available. So it means that you know, when a new version of software comes in, we are able to identify what versions of software, what components and what is a version uh, of each of the components and what change between the software versions. And upgrades are actually based on the same infrastructure that we have built for HA. So a startup to an application restart to application restart due to HA and an application restart due to upgrade, they're all the same. The only difference between the, the, in, the in the upgrade scenario, we are running a newer version of the component instead of the older version. So as you can see that because of our ability to split the software into multiple components and having a very well clean defined interface between these components, we have the ability to be a modular system. We can pick and choose the components that we need to up change and we can change them on the fly without having to reboot the device. The next important thing is that all state that is there in DDS is modeled, which means that there's a formal contract between the application and the rest of the system. So an application which adheres to the contract can be replaced, you know, a new application which adheres to the contract can replace an existing application without any collateral. No other applications in the system really need to know that something like this has happened. So that provides for the ability for us to be a modular uh, operating system. And if you look at the system architecture, you know, the so system architecture, you see it is layered. It is layered and there's a very clear, well-defined boundary between the infrastructure and the application business logic. The infrastructure does not interpret the state. For example, the DDS, though it stores all the state, does not interpret the state or does not even understand the semantics of the state, which means that a new state can be added, new types of state can be added, new applications can be added, and there's no impact on the underlying infrastructure, which is a very important quality to have in, it, in a network operating system. So what we see is that when applications fail, we are able to contain the failure to the component, quickly restart the component and reconcile and continue the functionality. And when the faults are there in the component, it is contained to the particular component only, it doesn't impact other components. And our ability to uh, you know, uh, split the functionality into hundreds of components makes it a very modular uh, and, and a highly available system. It's a long winding answer, but I hope this answered your question. Derek. 
Yes, absolutely, Pramo. That was uh, that was great. Thank you very much for the for the detailed um, information on on how the modularity works and you know kind of the benefits that that our customers get um, from that modularity from HA to upgrades and and everything in between. Um, so. You know, thank you very much for your time, uh, Promote, and, and thank all of you for watching. Uh, you know, again, this is one in the series and we will um, continue to have additional um, highlights within the series on Junos Evolve talking about the architecture and the advantages of, of what we've done here. So again, thank you very much and uh, I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you, Eric. It was great talking to you too. Thank you.